Known for his unforgettable role as James Bond, Sean Connery's later years were quietly overshadowed by his personal battle. We'll dive into the challenges he faced as he struggled through dementia, shining a light on a part of his life story many might not know. Facts First presents Inside Sean Connery's Sad Final Days as he battled dementia in secret. The Making of an Icon Before he became a screen legend, Sean Connery's life began modestly in Edinburgh, Scotland. Born in a working-class family, his mother was a cleaning woman and his father worked in a factory. Connery's early life in the tenements of Edinburgh was marked by economic hardship. He left school at the age of 13, stepping into the world of work with no clear ambition for acting. His early jobs were as varied as they were challenging, from a bricklayer to a milkman to a general laborer. This period in his life was characterized by a search for purpose, a journey that took him through various roles and experiences, pushing him to explore different paths, including amateur bodybuilding. It was during that phase that Connery developed a strong physical presence, which would later become a hallmark of his career. His pivot to acting was almost serendipitous. In 1953, a visit to London led to a life-changing moment. At 23 years old, Connery stumbled upon an audition for the musical South Pacific. With no formal training or experience in acting, his natural charisma and striking looks won him a part in the chorus. This opportunity opened the door to the world of acting. His ascent to global stardom was meteoric after his casting as James Bond in the 1962 film Dr. No. Connery, relatively unknown at the time, brought a unique blend of rugged charm, sardonic wit, and physical prowess to the role, redefining the image of cinematic masculinity. His portrayal of Bond was both revolutionary and iconic, setting a new standard for the character and the action genre. Connery's Bond was not just a spy. He was the epitome of cool, sophistication, and danger, a formula that resonated with audiences worldwide. Following Dr. No, Connery reprised his role as Bond in five more films throughout the 60s. Each film was a commercial success, further cementing his status as a leading figure in the film industry. His performances in these films were not just acts, they were cultural statements, shaping the very fabric of pop culture during that era. Beyond Bond Fearful of being pigeonholed into a single character, Connery made a bold move to leave the Bond series after 1967's You Only Live Twice. It marked the beginning of a new chapter in his career, one where he sought to showcase his versatility as an actor. Connery took on a variety of challenging roles, distancing himself from his Bond persona. His role as a Russian submarine captain in The Hunt for Red October was a significant departure from Bond, and demonstrated his ability to lead in complex, nuanced roles. Similarly, his performance as a Franciscan monk in The Name of the Rose showcased his range, proving he could handle intricate and demanding characters with ease. Connery's talents were further recognized with his Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in The Untouchables in 1987. This achievement was a testament to his skill and dedication to his craft. In 1989, he delivered another memorable performance in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, playing the father of Harrison Ford's iconic character. His portrayal of Henry Jones Sr. added a new dimension to the Indiana Jones series, blending humor and heart into the adventure narrative. Connery's chemistry with Ford was palpable, and his role was a highlight of the film, adding depth and warmth to the story. This role was a fitting culmination of Connery's career renaissance, showcasing his ability to captivate audiences across generations and genres. His performance in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was not just a testament to his acting abilities, but also a celebration of his enduring appeal and versatilities. It marked one of his last major roles before he began to step back from the Hollywood spotlight. Sean's Two Marriages Connery's notorious fiery sexuality and virility extended off-screen in his colorful love life. He met his first wife, Diane Silento, in a production of Anna Christie. Their tempestuous marriage lasted 11 years and produced a son, Jason. Silento later accused Connery of verbal and physical abuse, allegations he denied. His second marriage fared better. A 45-year partnership with French-Moroccan artist Micheline Roquebrune after a meeting at a golf tournament in Morocco 1970. Their shared passion for golf was a binding force, along with her strength in standing up to Connery's strong personality. 
Though the relationship had rocky moments, their bond endured where his first failed. While Connery never fully left the whirl of celebrity behind, especially as the ever-popular elder statesman of Bond, his long second marriage reflected a yearning for the comfort of an ordinary private life. Retiring to the Bahamas to play golf under the Caribbean sun with Michelin, distant from paparazzi intrusions, was a hard-won slice of heaven for Connery. Coping with the Indignity of Dementia after stepping away from the spotlight in 2006, Sean Connery embraced a quieter life in the Bahamas with his wife. But around 2010, when Connery was 80, the first signs of dementia started to surface, marking the beginning of a challenging journey. Dementia, a cruel and relentless condition, slowly eroded Connery's once sharp intellectual abilities. Known for his quick wit and strong presence, he gradually retreated from social gatherings as his memory and ability to communicate diminished. Initially, these changes were subtle, but over time, they became impossible to ignore. By 2015, the impact of dementia on his life was profound. His disorientation and confusion reached a point where travel, once a regular part of his life, was no longer feasible. The once vibrant and articulate actor now spent most of his days in the quiet confines of his home. Recognizing friends and acquaintances became a daily struggle, a stark contrast to the man who once thrived in the company of others. This period was marked by a gradual, heartbreaking decline. Connery, who had always been self-reliant and independent, found himself increasingly reliant on others for basic needs. Tasks that were once simple became monumental challenges. Conversations, once filled with insightful comments and lively banter, turned into a labyrinth of forgotten words and lost insights. Michelin, witnessing her husband's transformation, faced her own emotional turmoil. She watched as the disease stripped away layers of the man she knew, leaving a shell of his former self. Her husband, once an emblem of strength and charisma, was now dependent on her for the most basic aspects of daily life. Connery's final years were a testament to the brutal reality of dementia. The disease not only impacted his cognitive abilities, but also his emotional and social connections. He became more isolated, not by choice, but by the sheer force of the condition ravaging his mind. His world, once expansive and filled with adventure, had contracted to the walls of his home. In his last days, Connery was surrounded by the love and care of his family. Despite the ravages of dementia, moments of clarity still flickered through. In one such moment, he spoke of being, quote, in heaven's light, a touching reflection from a man who had touched the lives of so many. He passed away peacefully in his sleep, with Micheline by his side, marking the end of a deeply personal and challenging journey with dementia. In the twilight of his career, his battle with dementia cast a somber tone. Yet it's not just his health struggles that have come to frame discussions about his legacy. His reputation was complicated by allegations of abuse, which have prompted a deeper examination of his personal life. These claims, surfacing over the years in various interviews and accounts, stand in stark contrast to the charismatic characters he portrayed. Despite these controversies, his impact on film and popular culture remains significant. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your favorite memories of Sean Connery? Let us know in the comments section below.